Right. So, in the base. All right. So the Gemara is talking about the Mishnah, which gives us the halacha that there's a chiyuv of havchana. Havchana means to differentiate. So we have a chiyuv to differentiate, which means that in a number of different cases, but primarily when it relates to Yavamos, because we're saying that when a um, when a husband dies and his wife is going to fall to Yibun, to the brother, so they have to wait three months before Yibun or Chalitza because, okay, because it's possible that she may be pregnant. It's possible that she may be pregnant. She might have become pregnant immediately before the husband died. In which case, if they perform Yibun, right, it turns out that she's an Eshes Ach, Right? She's forbidden to the Yavim because there's no mitzvah of Yibam at all, right? Because she's pregnant with a child who will end up being a Vlad Kayama, will end up being a viable child. Right? And it will turn out that they were over on the Isser of Eshes Ach, right? When there was no mitzvah of Yibam. Okay. Um, now, the Mishnah, however, extends it to any case of a woman who was married. Okay. And then her husband dies, so she gets divorced. She has to wait three months before remarrying. And in addition to that, the Mishnah says that a ger, or, or well, a gioris, that's Megayer, also has to wait three months before she marries um, now to a, to a Jewish person. So all of these halachas are stated in the Mishnah, and the Gemara is going to clarify all of these halachas. So the Gemara, um, right up at the top with this two dots, it's about six lines down. So it's quoting the Mishnah, which says that all women have to have havchana. So the Gemara says, Bishlam Yavama, so by Yavama, we understand why Havchana is necessary. There's, there's a tremendous risk. Right? We're, we're dealing with the potential for Eshes Ach, which is a Chiv Kares. Right? If it turns out that she's pregnant, right, then there's no mitzvah of Yibam, and they were over on the Isra of Eshes Ach, so there's a tremendous risk involved. Ela Sha'ar Kala Nashim Aman. But other women, what's the, what's the risk? What's the big deal? Right? So let's say she was previously married, right? Uh, but now, now that marriage is over, right? So what's the difference? So she'll be married. If it turns out she was pregnant, who cares? Okay. So Amar Rav Nachman Amar Shmuel Mishum Da Amar Kra Lios Lecha Lelokim Ulazar Kra Acharecha that I will be Hashem is saying to be your God and your children after you. So that means your children should follow after you. Lahavchin Ben Zaro Shel Rishon Lazaro Shel Sheni that there is a requirement to know whose child this child is, right? Who is the father of this child? So if she was, uh, if the woman was previously married, now the marriage ends, right? And she's going to remarry. We need to know, is this child from the first husband or from the second husband? Even if there's no immediate practical halakhic ramification, right? Her marriage is fine either way. The child is is kosher. He's not. A, there's no problem of the child being a mamzer. There's no question that the child will be a a kosher Jewish child. Nevertheless, there's a mitzvah that the Torah is telling us, and there's a question in the Rishonim if it's an asmachta, if is it a mitzvah do raisa, or is it just we want this to be right, and and we're basing it on the pasuk, and we're just saying that it makes sense that we should have to know who's who's uh, who the father of the child is. Um, but either way, we're learning out from the Pasuk that, that there's a mitzvah to know your child um, should be misyaches after you, that there should be a yichos, we should know who the father of the child is. So the Gemara now jumps to the case of a ger and a gioris. So Masif Rava. So Rava, said, Rava posed a question, right, that uh, we said, lafikach ger v'gioris, tzrichin lahamtin gimel chadasha. So we said a ger and a gioris, right? Even if they are married to each other. So if you have a couple that's Magaya, okay, they convert, married to each other, they have to separate now for, for three months. There's a mitzvah of havchana. Havchana, What's the purpose of this havchana? Right? They're, they're, they're married to each other. We know who the father of the child is, right? What purpose is there for havchana in this case? So says the Gemara, havchanami, Okay. So the Gemara says there's a, there's a need to have havchana. There's a purpose in this havchana. The purpose of this havchana 
is to separate between a child who was conceived biktusha, meaning after the, the mother had already converted, okay? to a child who was conceived after, uh, before the mother had converted. Okay? Meaning in either case, we're talking about where the child is going to be born after the conversion, right? Because we're talking about Afghana to find out if she's pregnant, but she, she already converted, right? But we want to know the difference between a child who was, um, who was conceived before to a child who was conceived after. So I wanted to take a, a, a couple of minutes to talk about this, this idea of Zara Bikdusha and Zara Shalom Bikdusha. Okay? Meaning if a child is conceived prior to the, the gerus, so how exactly do we define the status of, of that child? Okay? In other words, there's, there's really two possibilities here. Right? Is this child a, considered to be born a Jewish child? Okay? Or do we say that this child is, is a ger just like the parents are? Just like the mother. Why would okay. you say that it's like yeah. So why would you say that? What do you think? The only reason I, I don't know. I have no idea. I would say the one thing is whether whether it needs a proper like completion of the gear. It's, no, that's, that's yeah. But the question is why? Well, why would you even have a hobby to think that it's care? <clears throat> because the because so why do you think? Because the the fetus is already in existence. The fetus exists, therefore it's it's not a care. Therefore it's not a Jew. But the fetus is in existence as a non-Jew. Is it right. right. If the fetus was conceived you when the mother was not Jewish. You're saying it's Pasha that's not Jew and then it's again? Correct. Okay, oh, so you're saying oh, it's Pasha. No, okay. I'm saying it's Pasha is not a Jew. Pasha right. the baby is not a Jew. Why, why can't the, the gerus of the mother apply to the child? I mean, why would the baby be right? so, like, 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 the baby is really just a limb of the mother. It's not just the mikvah. Right. We don't we say that like, oh. a so, so the Gemara is, is kosher. You don't have shepherd, right? Very so, good. Yeah, but it's so, not an animal. The Gemara has a discussion, right? Uva or uva lav yerichimo. Do we say that the, the child is simply a limb of the mother? It's an extension of the mother, right? But that question seems to be, right, whether the tevila of the mother, right, works for the child as well. Okay, whether the tevila of the mother is considered a tevila on the child. Or do we say that when the child would be born, it would need a new tefillah? But if that's the case, would you need to know for sure that you have a, that you that, that would the mother need to know for sure she's actually pregnant in order to for the tefillah? So emotion? there's a question about that. Does she have to have intent that it should serve? And there's a big question because a ger obviously needs intent to convert, right? Simply goes into a mikvah, it's meaningless, right? There has to be intent to convert, right? If he if he goes into the ocean, right, he doesn't become a ger. He has to have intent to convert. So where is that intent for the child? You know, the question. What? Yeah, so so many of the Rishonim say that there's a concept here of Zachin La Adam Shalobafana that we consider it as chus, we consider it a, a prophet, it's something good for this child to become Jewish, right? To join Claudia. So. And therefore, we have the right to attribute that intent to him. Okay, which is incredible, right? We're saying that we're attributing that intent. What? He wouldn't do that to a baby that's born in it. Uh, no, we do have yeah, a discussion make, about Ger Yeah, but then we make them do something more when they convert. Like, it doesn't, so, not, they have the right to reject it. They have the right to reject it, right. But even uh, if they have the right to reject it, if they don't reject it, but what made it work to begin with? Let's say they don't baby, reject it. This baby would also have the right to reject it. It's the same thing. So, so it would seem, right, it would seem that, that uh, Uber Yerichimo, right, so then, I mean, that's only for the Tevila, but this child would have the opportunity to reject it as well. Okay, so... There is, uh, and, and uh, I fish touched on it a while back, there's a question. Okay? There's a Rambam, um, and it's brought down in Shulchan Aruch as well. The, the, the Rambam says that if you have two brothers, okay, that are horasan shalob b'kdusha, v'leidasan b'kdusha, so they were conceived, um, they were conceived prior to Gerus, and then born, what? So, so presumably the case would have to be when the twins. It's very difficult to find a case no, otherwise. So what? She can't undo her gavis. Uh, what? She has two kids there. Right, 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 right. Exactly. So, so the case would have to be, even though there's a machlokas, I'm not quite sure what the case would be otherwise. Um, um, so, uh, I think so the, the, there seems to be a machlokas, and I'm not quite sure exactly what the case would be otherwise, whether it has to be twins 
or it doesn't have to be twins. I was struggling with that um, to figure it means that one's out. Russia, Dusha, one's Russia, or it means right. So it means one was Harasa Shalobik Dusha, and then the second one was one a year, two years later, right after the gave us long after that, right. So that could be right. Right. I think that that has to be the case. So the 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 Shach and some others say that it has to be only twins. Okay. Um, the Nod Behuda and others say no, it doesn't have to be twins, right? And it doesn't matter. It's not clear what the advantage of them being twins would be. Okay. Uh, what, what, what advantage is there? What, what significance does that have? Why would that make a difference? Okay. But the, the incredible thing is the Rambam says, regardless of whether it's twins or not twins, the Rambam says that they are chayav mishum eshes ach. That if one of them were to marry um, his brothers, right? meaning they married after the gavis, they grew up, right? they married women, and uh, if one of them were to then to have relations with his brother's wife, okay, then he would be over the Isser, it's an Isser chorus of Eshesach, the Erva of Eshesach. His brother died or just if his brother is alive? Well, if his brother is alive, then she's an Eshes Ish as well, right? Then she's a, right? Yeah, so yeah, then, yeah. Right, then you, have, you have plenty of other problems as well, but, but yes, it would be both, right? And they're saying, even if the brother dies, right, then, then there would still be an Isser of Eshesach, okay? which means that somehow we're saying that these two brothers are considered related to each other, right? The problem is, right, what's the obvious problem? Why well, oh, so, so when it comes to Yibum, so the Ram says when it comes to Yibum, right, to the Yibum goes after the father. Right? So, ah, uh, so. The father is the and the father doesn't count. Ah, uh, so, well, so, so here's, so when, when it comes to the, so here's where it's going to get interesting, right? So when it comes to Yibum, right, we say that they're not considered to be of the same father. Right? And Yibum requires them to be of the same father, right? They can't be half brothers. They have to be uh, full brothers. They have to be from the same father, right? But um, when it comes to Eshes Ach, somehow we're saying that they are related, right? Which is, which is a tremendous chiddush, right? It's a problem, right? What's the problem? The problem is if they were, if they were Horasan Shalobik Dusha, right? So then presumably, like we're saying, they're considered gamer. We're right. assuming the Ram means Teresa. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Ram says, Hayavan Mishamesh Sakh, the Chayyav Kharis. He says, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's not Asr, it's Chayavan Mishamesh Sakh. No, not Dharabana. What? Yeah, yeah, we're not talking about. Generally, we Asr Dharabana and all the. We Asr Gare right. in all, in all Arayos, anything that would appear to be Arayos. So, any, anybody who he identifies with as family, right, would be forbidden to him, Midrabana. But the Allah de Oraisa is Gersh and his Gaya. Geru converts Kakatan Shanola Adami. He's like a newborn child. Right? He has no familial relations right, at all because he's considered to be a newborn child. So how in the world are we saying here that there's a that there's a halacha of of Eshes Ach? Okay, so so tremendous problem. And uh, the uh, um, many, many ask this question, shown it, right? uh, notably the, the, the Ramban and others. And uh, struggling to figure out right, what, what in the world does this mean? So, um, so there is a, a tshuva from Reb Chaim Oze, and there's tshuva sachiyaz. Reb Chaim Oze says something absolutely incredible. So Reb Chaim Oze says that, um, well, he's going back on the, the, the Ramban, explicitly says that uh, he brings a proof from a harosa and shalom b'kdusha, b'kdusha, that you see from there, that it's possible to flip around the order of Mila and Kavila. So a ger, at least a male ger, a male convert, right, needs two things. For, uh, for a female convert, you just need Kavila in the mikvah, right? But a male convert needs Kavila, right? And then he needs Mila, right? He also needs Nan and then, sorry. So the normal order is that first you do the Mila, and then you do the Tavila. Okay, the Mila has to precede the, the Tavila. So Ramban says, I'll prove to you that even if you switch around the order, it's okay, right? What's the proof? What's the proof? This is the proof. This is the proof. How's this a proof? The, the, baby, the baby, we're saying the baby's is a yarach of the emo. Right, because the, how does the baby convert through the tevila of the mother, right? The mila obviously is not being done until the child is born, right? So you see clearly, right, that the Ramban is saying that this is a tevila of gerus, right? And and uh, and and 
the, the Mila comes afterwards. So you see clear, right? So Chaim Lissa says, uh, and, and he says this on his, own, on his own, that's incredible. He says that for all matters where um, it relates to something from the mother, we consider it to be, we consider this, this child to be born from a Jewish mother. We consider this child, it's a, it's a tremendous Kiddush. It says when it comes to the father, he has no relation to his father whatsoever. Okay? Uh, and, and any, any arayos, any erva on the, on the father's side, okay, have no connection to him at all. Right? And he's, uh, he's mutter, and then we, we said, uh, yes, said it's a dindur abana, right? But midor uh, there's no connection. So there'll be no issues on the father's side. On a brother from a different mother, right? Right. I mean, anyways, that's not Kiddush here because anyways, the father is a Jewish. What? I mean, it's not, like anyways, not, right? I mean, that's the halacha. I mean, of, nothing to do with this. Like, what? Like, even whatever, if the father were to convert, regardless of the sugya. Okay? Well, correct, but even if the father were to convert, yeah, the there's whole family to, converts together, right? The, the, but there's no all gear and shit is back. So. Right. Right. And there's no. There's no, no family. Father. Well, correct. Correct. But that's only regarding the father. Right. When it comes to the mother, says Rav Chaim Eliezer, then this child is considered born from a from a Jewish mother. He's considered to have been born. He's considered to have been born a Jew. This is Rav Chaim Eliezer's own chiddush, right? Which is clearly going against the going against the Rishonim. Okay, and he says that there's no din. He is a ger, but he's not kikot In other words, he has the status of a ger. Okay. But he's not considered to be a newborn child with no relation whatsoever. So that means if he has a brother from the same mother, it's his brother. It is his brother. And it's Allah Chavesh Asaf. So if Chaim is a further, right, there's a mitzvah of Pidyon Aben. Because he's born, he's considered, uh, he's not considered a Katn Shanul uh, in regard to the mother. So what's his reason why we hold it that? Anything from the other side is you know. because because he's saying when the child is born, it's born from a Jewish mother. So by the time the child is born, then it's considered to have been born from no, a Jewish mother. It's considered to have been born a Jew. Right, but he's saying that he says that regarding the mother's side, we we hold that he's Jewish. Regarding the father's side, he has no relationship. So I'm saying, why did he differentiate, or what's his reason? So why does he differentiate? Because the father's only relation to the child comes through conception. Sure, that was that was when the father was a guy, right? The father's gone. He's out of the picture now, right? Right. But, but the mother has a connection to the child through birth. Sure, at that time, she's already Jewish. Right, but at, at conception, she wasn't Jewish. Correct. That's why it's a chiddush. Now, the simple understanding is that once that that since the child was conceived, right, right, uh, when when the mother is, is not Jewish, shalom b'kedusha. So the child has the status of a ger. The child has the status of a ger, yeah. right? It doesn't matter when the child was born, right? But he's a ger. Lachora, Lachora is, is true even if the father was Jewish, right? I guess where's his No, so there's a separate discussion. If the father's Jewish, then it's possible that the child would be Messiahis after him, even though he's a, a, a even, even though right. not Jewish. There's a little bit of a question about that, I think, right? It is I'm not sure exactly. Doctor, I'm not sure exactly. Well, I think it's a question, right? Uh, whether the child's in the You're talking about like your religious father. And like uh, maybe, father. maybe. I don't remember. Where's, where's, he lear- where's he learning this from? Like, where's he learning this album from? He's learning it from this Rambam. He's saying the only way to understand it is like this, right? And he also brings yeah. another proof from uh, where it says that um, um, that it says that you have to do Pidyon Aben. So he says it has to be, right? And he brings a proof from there. Um, and uh, so if Chaim Oizah takes this. Yeah. Because you assume, I guess, I mean, she's a guy, she's a woman, right? Like, Stam, if a woman's in a guy, we trust her that she never had a baby before, I guess. Because right? we assume Stam, a guy, is his own, right? No, because once, she, not ben. once right. she, right. ben, we trust that she never had a baby. Once she, once she converts, we trust her. I mean, you trust her now as a Jewess. Which, yeah, the, the baby's born after she's. No, so that's a good her. question. That's a good question. Why do we assume that? Like, that, uh, later is, is that we, like, that like we assume she's a zona and therefore we don't trust who the father was. How do we know? How do we know that? Yeah, that's a good question. Now we trust her. So if she's so. No, no. Right now, if she's a Jewish and she tells us who the father is, we went through, we're choshesh that she was a zona and the father is not the father. Right. The Gemara later on. Is that that and Rashi, you're saying now we just change. Okay. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, meaning, meaning, leaving aside uh, all the the 
alumnus behind it, what, uh, why do we trust her that she didn't have a child before this? I'm not sure. It's a good question. Uh, it's a mission of the Chorus. So uh, I don't know. I'm not sure how we know that, uh, that she but didn't have any prior children. Yeah, there there has to be a case where, where, how would it be? I mean, if she, I don't know. Not it's sure a steer in Rashi. Like Rashi, in one place is Mashma, we do trust her. In one place is Mashma, we don't. Right. So, like, yeah. you know, I don't know how you, I mean, I don't know if you're buying. I mean, a Gershon is, a, a Gioras is considered a to a coin, right? Because we assume that she that she was a Zona, right? So, how do you trust that she didn't have a child? I'm not sure. That's a good question. Just from the fact that people, because it's an opposite thing, that's what he's doing. That's where he's developing it from, right? Right. He's developing it from this idea to say. We must change our minds when she was in church. The Isha Daf is also from the Torah of the Yeah. Isha Daf is from either either side or both. Like either side. Yeah. Yeah. Did you say a fear from maybe the Torah um, when, um, when when the child? In the mother's womb, mm-hmm. then the um, all right, all right, say is that that he will bring the proof that he was an adult. He said that he was an adult, that he had to see what was going on. That's what Ramban says. Ramban says that will bring a proof from, from the case of, uh, of a Muberish and his Gaira that. Even for an adult, if you switched up the order, it would still be valid. It seems like an obvious fear, but I'm sure there's an answer to it. Because if the child's part of the mother, then maybe that's a different case than she's already born. I mean, there are those who argue on the Ramban, but the Ramban holds that it's a proof. Okay, the Ramban says that this is uh, that this is a sufficient proof um, to say that um, since you see that the Mila can happen before the, I'm sorry, the Tzvila can happen before the Mila, right, as it has to be by, uh, by, by, by a fetus, right, by an unborn child, so then um, that would apply by an adult as well. Yeah, you could argue the case, right, you could argue the case, right, but that's the Namban says. And uh, he brings another halacha, which is, which is strange, that the Avni Malom asks, it gets stuck with, there's a halacha that, uh, so there's a there's a halacha in the Torah um, that a a, a mitzri okay, is not allowed to marry into Klal so even if they convert. So the first two generations of mitzri that convert, um, uh, sorry, after a mitzri converts, the first two generations are forbidden to marry into Klal so The third generation is permitted. Right? So who did they marry? They can marry other mitzri that convert. No, it's the grandkids can do that, not the great grandkids. The door shlishi. I thought door shlishi. Door shlishi is the grand, right. The third but door is permitted. Being door shlishi. Oh, okay, I, 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 so the third generation is permitted. People who convert their grandkids to marry. People. Correct. Right. Um, so the halacha is if a muberes is miskaira, if you have a a, a pregnant woman who's megaya, okay, her the the child who's born has the status of a second generation. Daphne Malone says, what in the world? He's a gay, right? He's a gay all by himself, right? He's first generation, right? So, 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 Chaim is according to me, makes a lot of sense, right? Because mitzvah, we're going to, we're going to go with as Chiddush in of itself, but we're going to go based on defined by the mother. And, and, uh, and since he's born, right, as a Yisrael, so then he's going to count as a, as a mitzvah Shani already. Now, Chaimelizah takes this to, to, to an extreme, meaning it's not just uh, it's not just the Chumrah, right? We'll say there's a Shesach, right? Chaimelizah says in a different in a different chuba, he, he he really goes out on a limb. Chaimelizah says, "Mitzvahs are really cool." What? You already came. Mitzvahs are cooler, but here's a bigger one, right? Chaimelizah says that if you had a child like this, okay, that was born harasa shalav b'tusha le'dasa b'tusha, okay. So let's say the child's born on Shabbos. When do you do the bris? So it depends. What type of bris is it? Is this a bris of a Jewish child? Then it's Dercha Shabbos. Right? Regular Gears bris is not Dercha Shabbos? 
if a guy comes to be Megaya, right, we're not going to do the Mila on Shabbos. We're going to let him wait till Sunday. There's no, right? The only reason Mila is the Shabbos is because the Torah says by Yom HaShmini. The Torah says do it on the eighth day, and we learn out from there on the eighth day, even if it falls out on Shabbos. Right? So then the Gemara learns out, right? Zerus HaKosov, that the Torah says, even if it falls out on Shabbos. There's no, there's no mitzvah of Yom HaShmini for, uh, for a guy that's coming to, to convert. Right? So we wait. Not the Shabbos. Says of Chaim Lezer, and he brings from, from the Mikdash David of David Kalina earlier than him a little bit. And he says that it's clear to me that uh, it's going to be Dech Shabbos. He's considered a Yisrael that was born. And the meal is going to be Dech Shabbos. So Chaim is really, he, he, he goes out on a limb on this. He's willing to, to right? he's really willing to put himself out there. Right? Chaim Lezer holds his Dech Shabbos. Whatever's a mystery, but, yeah, right? whatever's a second generation mystery in the, in the home, second generation, right? On Shabbos, right? With the Aisha Sach, but that's what he says, yeah. But Chaimazer really goes out, he says that it's 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 clear to him that that this child is considered a Yisrael, he's considered born a Yisrael, okay. And uh, and the meal is going to be the Shabbos, that's what Chaimazer says. So, um, it's just uh, interesting. The Gemara is saying. There's a difference between harasa v'kdusha and harasa shalom v'kdusha. The simple understanding of that, right, is you need to know whether the child is a ger or the child is a Jew, right? Or is he, is he born a Jew or is he a ger, right? But uh, it's just interesting to know, according to Chaim Lezer, right, uh, regardless, he's going to be considered to be born uh, to be born in Israel. So why is the Gemara referring to him saying that he has to know a Jew? Oh, so there's still differences, right? Um, Yerusha, but, but a primary difference is he related to his father. Yeah. Right, is he related to his father? Okay. Um, yeah. And. Uh, yeah, because Yerusha yeah. goes after the father. No, but he can still be Yerusha's mother, but there's other brothers from his mother. I mean, Magabe's mother, he's supposed to be. Could he be Yerusha's mother? I guess so. Yeah, I guess he could, he could be Yerusha's mother, right? Normally, Yerusha goes after the father, so then, right, he wouldn't be, he wouldn't have Yichas to his father. Right. Okay, so the Gemara now continues, right? Um, uh, so that's the first shot in the Gemara is you have to know the difference between Zera Nizra Vikdusha and Zera Shalom Vikdusha. Okay. Rava Omar Rava says, Zera Shem Yisra Sachoso Me Aviv, the Yabim Eshes Achiv Me Imo, the Yotzis Imo Lashuk. So in all these cases, right, we're concerned basically that, uh, that he is going to think that he is. Uh, he's going to think that he's from the, the second marriage, that he's from uh, after the Gerus, right? In which case, he'll be Nisiaches to, to his father, right? And if he'll have a, uh, if he'll have a brother, right, from, if he'll have a brother from that father, he's going to think it's his brother and he'll do, uh, he'll do Yibum. And for Yibum, we know it has to be a brother from the same father, right? And uh, really, there's no mitzvah of Yibum because they're not considered from the same father. So Rava says, that uh, the reason is because we're afraid that you're going to come out to cases of arayas. Okay. So the Gemara, the Gemara goes through um, now a long discussion. Um, the Gemara says that maybe it should be sufficient to wait a month, right? Um, because by then we'll be able to figure out when the child is born, right? So the Gemara says uh, the Gemara says a month is not going to work. Right? The Gemara says maybe wait two months. I don't be able to figure it out. So the Gemara goes on a, on a discussion back and forth. Basically, the Gemara wants to know exactly why do we have to wait? Uh, why do we have to wait three months, right? And the the, the basic answer the Gemara is going to come out with is that at three months, right? It's it's nikar already becomes obvious if a woman is pregnant or not, right? So the point is we'll know now. No, it's originally the Gemara thought maybe we could know based on when the child is born, right? And the Gemara is going to come out that no, we need to know now whether or not this woman is pregnant, okay? Um, so I, uh, was just saying, there's a, a interesting question and, uh, it's a chuva and I couldn't, I couldn't find the chuva right now, but it's an interesting question. Let's say you have a suffix of, in the case of Hafkan, for example, there's not so many cases like this, but let's say the, uh, the husband died and we don't know exactly when the husband died. Okay. So we have, let's say, Adam come and say that, uh, the husband died, the Medina Sayyam, right? But we don't know exactly. We, we can't determine exactly when it was, right? So Havchana is going to start, right, from whenever the husband died. Even though you could argue that uh, Havchana maybe should start from when the husband left, right? 
because clearly she couldn't become pregnant if he wasn't there, right? But we don't hold that way. We hold that hal- that uh, Hannah is going to start from when the husband died. So let's say you had a case of suffer. Okay. So what should the halacha be in that case? Okay. Do we say that? Okay, it's a suffix. So it's a suffix on a on a din to Abana, So they should be allowed to marry. Right. So the the original thought, the Hamvamina of the, the show question was like this. He said there's a concept of what we call a Davashi Eshlamatira. Okay, which is it goes as follows. So din, it's really a din to Abana, but the Chachamim said, let's say you have, and there's a, there's actually two applications of it. Okay? Let's say you have a, a case of a of a suffolk of an iser. Okay, so the Gemara's classic case on this is uh, is is right at the beginning of of Masechus Beitza. The Gemara says if you have an egg that was born, we don't know if it was born on Yom Tov, if it was born before Yom Tov, and uh, therefore the question is, if it was born on Yom Tov, it's Moksa. right? If it was born before Yom Tov, it's not Moksa. right? So it's a suffolk, right? It's a suffolk derabbanan because Moksa is only derabbanan, right? So Really, it should be permitted. Right? Suffolk to Rabbanu, we go to Kula. Right? But the Gemara introduces a new idea. The Gemara says, no. And here it's going to be called the Davashi Eshla What does that mean? That means that it's, it's, it's something where if I leave it, if I leave it alone, and I don't approach the question, it's going to, be, it's going to become mutter all on its own. Let's say the egg is mukta. Let's say I consider the egg to be mukta. Tomorrow, it's not Yom Tov anymore. Tomorrow I can eat it. So why do I have to get involved? Okay, in a whole question of suffix, ah, suffix to abundant the cooler, we could be makel here, right? We could be lenient because it's only suffix. Just leave it alone. You leave it alone, tomorrow will be mutter. So we have no reason to be makel, to be lenient, right? If you could just wait till tomorrow. So that's a concept, it's a durabanon concept. Okay, the other application of it is when you have a tyrovis. Okay, so if you have a mixture of Isser and Hector. Isn't there anything you don't just want to hear about the cooler? Exactly. Right. We're not going to be makel because we'll say, listen, and the, and the, the application is the, the Gemara's uh, Lashon is, Why should we allow you to eat it? The Isser, meaning why do we have to come and, and remove the Isser if you could just wait till tomorrow and eat it without any question at all? And the second application of this is when you have a Tarovas. So if you have a mixture of Isser and Heter and you have 60, let's say, of the, of the, the Heter connected to the Isser, so really it should be Mutter. Okay, but this this uh, this iser is going to become mutter tomorrow, anyways, or or in the, in in the future, right? An example that they discuss is let's say chametz, right? If it's going to become mutter after after Pesach, right? At least on a Doraisa level, right? It's discussion because we don't up, but let's say, right? Just for example, right? So if you have chametz that got uh, mixed together, right? It got mixed into something else. So why do we have to allow it to be bottle? You could just wait till after Pesach and eat it then. Yeah, that's an example of a, a Dava Shiesh on Okay. So uh, the, the show wanted to say that here as well, right? Why do we have to be matter now? Let them wait three months. So you wait three months, she'll be mutter then. So it should be a Dava Shiesh on Okay, that was the, that was the, that was the question. There's a difference, though. The, What's the well, difference? The big difference is, is that getting married is a mitzvah. Okay. No, there's, okay. there's a big difference. True. Like eating, eating, True. Waiting till after Yom to eat food is not a mitzvah. True. Okay. That is a good point. That is a good point because you're pushing off fulfilling a mitzvah. That's that is a good point, right? As opposed to just waiting, there's not, right? But we could still argue that maybe it still should be applied to the And there's another big difference. There's a difference like this. What is it? It's like generally like Davish Shemitim is not a Hikashal Isser, right? Like this is a. Like, it's like. You're just applying the Svara of it, but like. Uh, no, it's brought down in the Shulchan Aruch, meaning Davish Shemitim is not Batal. It's not Batal Shishim. It's not Batal, like, but like, I, I was saying, I just wrapped my head around, I've never heard of the Davish Shemitim applied to anything about like a Chat Sachal Isser. Like, can I consume this item? Like, can I. Uh, it. No, it has like two that. applications as application of Tarovis and yeah, application never heard of. Yeah, it's never applied to a person before, like, they're saying, like, I've been married or something. Can you, can you oh, marry yeah. someone? Yeah, right? it, can, it applies to the situation. Anytime you have a suffix, right? Because it's always, it's always it's always rolled into all the other dinner abundance, like uh like a khatika or those things. It's always kind of rolled in because they're all the things that are not bottled the elements, like in my head. I'm like, right. Yeah, but it does right. it is distinct in its own. Right, right, but it's right, exactly. 
right? Because it has this separate second application of of uh, of suffix, right? It's not only limited to the case of Tarovis, it's limited to any case of a suffix. I, I don't think this is what you're going for, but like the core of Chalak is that, um, right? Like, uh, let's say, comments on Pesach or, or well, whatever, any other, uh, like, like something like Chalak Chumal, yeah. one of those other foods, right? Or those, those the general cases. Like, so, so don't eat this, eat that, right? Like, yeah, so it's not don't eat this, eat that. Meaning, isn't, isn't, there's no need to eat this food, and this food will come with it later. So, like, leave it, it'll come with it. It's fine. So, so that itself, I mean, the, we can't that, argue, don't eat that, right? Don't eat this, right? Because the fact that I could eat something else, right, could apply to any case of type of this. And that's not, that's no, not, no, not so the problem. This is for a Darish Islam that's here. And as far as I could eat this later. The is that, that well, why are you eating it for this or eating it right. for heather, right? Right. But don't matter, right? Right. But there's a, there's an intrinsic idea, of, like, like, what is the only food I have? It's good, but you could eat it tomorrow. Even if it's the only food you have, right? But but what difference does it make to you if you eat it today or you eat it tomorrow? Yeah, if you're gonna die, it doesn't matter. We're not talking about we're not talking about sakana <laughs> sapash. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We're not talking about sakana sapash. Everybody has food. Right. So what difference does it make to you? Let me word a little bit, right? There's a built-in But well, you're on the right track. Well, there's a built-in yeah. there's a built-in head there within within the Russian here that the thing will spoil before it becomes mutter, then you're allowed to not, not because it's not exactly right. so because it's not so a double shit. Yeah. You guys say you're not spoil, but you're making for wait three months to get married. Like like there's a certain like ah, there's so a you, loss in those three months. Ah, you're on the right track. Very good. Okay. So the Nadibihuda says like this. Nadibihuda says it in the in the Slach and in the in the in Chuvas also he says this. And uh, it's it's uh, it's brought down. It's brought down in Shulchan Aruch as well. That uh, it's brought down in the in the Mefarshim of the Shulchan Aruch. That that we can say like there's two distinct type of cases. The, the case I gave you was you have the egg that was uh, laid on the counter, right? So I have one egg, right? That's uh, like Yossi was saying. I have one egg, right? So Chazal said, what difference does it make to you if you eat this egg today? You eat this egg tomorrow. It says the night of Yehuda, let's say I had a different case. Let's say I had a Shiloh of Mokta. Okay. And my question is, could I use, right? Can I use this pot today? Or do I have to wait till tomorrow? Right. I have a suffix, is this pot Mokta or not Mokta? Whatever it is, right? Okay. And I say, it's a Dovashir Shalmatir, right? Because why use it today? Right? Just wait till tomorrow and you can use it to have to. Right. So that's that's that would be the, the the first thing I would that would be my go-to, right? My go-to would be, I should talk about it. Right? Why use okay. it today? Just wait till tomorrow. We'll deal with it. Right? Says the night of Yehuda. So says the night of Yehuda. No, there's a big difference. If I have one egg, so how many times am I going to eat this egg? Only once, right? As I said, what difference? Does it make to you if you eat it today? You eat it tomorrow. But this pot, how many times can I use this pot? Hundred times, right? I can use it today, and I can use it tomorrow. So you telling me to wait till tomorrow, I'm still have the loss of today. You're waiting till tomorrow, right? Doesn't take away, doesn't mitigate the loss of today. That's not a davashir shemat here. The big Kiddush from the Nadi Yehuda. This is a svar, but as far as seems to be pretty much accepted by the Poskim that this is not going to be called the Davish Yishlam Okay, so the Nadi Yehuda says that when it comes to eating something, let's say a mutza, so then you could eat it today, you could eat it tomorrow. Okay, you could only eat it once. Then the Chazal is going to say, wait till tomorrow. But if it comes to tiltul mutza, right, that's what he says at first, that uh, when it comes to moving mutza, I can use it today, I can use it tomorrow. Right, the fact that I can wait till tomorrow and use it, I'm still have the loss of today. So we should make that There's no mat here. Are being fresh or not? So they do, they do. Yeah. It's possible. If, like that is a possibility. Spoil. If you say it's going to spoil, yeah, you're right? Saying, like, like fresh eggs. eggs. You like fresh eggs, and you, so so the so there it seems like Kazawa is saying that if there's no if there's no tremendous loss involved, right? Okay, so it's a little bit. Right? But for that, we'll say possibly. Possibly, well, you could argue, it depends to what level. So it seems like to that level, Chazal is saying, listen, to this, we're not going to allow it. But, but uh, certainly if it's going to spoil, right, or there'll be a loss, right, then, then you're right. Then it wouldn't be a Dovashir Shemakim. But then he does go on a step further, right? 
he's saying that when it comes to um, when it when it comes to something that I can use over and over, right? So then, then we don't apply this halacha of double shiur shalom So there are there are there are some who have, who have questions on this, right? Um, there could be there could be problems with it. You're gonna use the woman over and over. What? Yeah. So so, but what would you say here? Right. She, she could be married. I mean, she could be married. Actually, it's months. married, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Be married then, but not married now. Exactly. So them. exactly. So in our case, right? In our case, it's going to be the same thing. Right? The fact that I can marry in three months, right, doesn't change the fact that I could be I could have been married now. Especially considering that she doesn't get the zonus right now. So like, I mean. Yeah, right, so then there's a loss to her. But even if you look at just the, the man's side of it, let's say, theoretically, right, you say the point, the fact that I could marry her in three months, right, doesn't doesn't take away from the fact that right now you're saying she's also for the next three months. Right. Okay. They apply this to other cases, to, uh, right, let's say somebody has a suffix, right, how long it's been since they ate flesheks, right, the classic case they talk about, right. So... So uh, the initial argument is uh, it's the of the So wait an extra hour, right? You're not sure if was he finished, you ate the chum at two o'clock, get it at three o'clock, whatever it is. Okay, so wait an extra hour, right? The of the right? But uh, but uh, plus some say, right? That uh, I can argue. Listen, I could eat milkshakes now. I could eat more milkshakes later, right? So so therefore, I should be. I can say. That it's not a double shiur material because the fact that you're telling me in an hour doesn't take away from what you're saying that right now it's also for me. And so it's uh, uh, there's other other applications, other questions. Um, but I just thought it's uh, a fascinating application of this uh, of this Neidah Behuda here, where uh, it would apply in this case. I don't remember where you know, I saw this in the Chuba once. Um, I can't, I couldn't find it. So for a for case in this case, we'll just make it up. Like the suffix, you don't want the suffix for how long it's been. Right. So she just gets married then, or so to the to the low to in other words to to the point where we know it's not a suffix anymore, or whatever. In other words, if we know he was alive uh, two months ago, right? So then you go to that, right? Or if, but if you didn't know at all, then she be mutter, right? So you count whatever you already know. You count what you would know, right? Because the suffix, we're going to say that uh, it's a suffix on a on a dindra right? So would you say the same thing if somebody for for an almana who who Whose husband went away for two months. Same so there's different because there, there, what we seem to be saying is that it's like a, it's what we call like a low plug. You know, it's when Chazal made a, a halacha. Sure. They said a woman who's who's uh, becomes widow, whose marriage ends, you have to wait three months before you remarry. So even though you're right, yeah. right, logically it doesn't actually right. There's no reason for it to apply, but um, we're not but, worried about the pregnancy. Right, we're not act- in actuality. There's no concern in this case, but nevertheless, we're going to uh, we're going to apply that halacha because of what we call a a, a, lay, a lepluk. Okay, so the the gemara just to, to quickly uh, summarize the gemara, the gemara really transfers this into um, into another case. Of uh, the gemara says there's another halacha, okay, that um, that. Well, so the Gemara asks a question, why don't we just, uh, that, that we can check, see if she's pregnant, let's see if she's showing any signs of pregnancy, right, on her body, let's see if her, right, we can, we can have, uh, right, so the Gemara says, let's see if she's walking straight, right, if she can walk straight, then we know she's not pregnant, right, if she's walking, uh, if she's already walking funny, right, then we can see that uh, she is, so the Gemara says that, uh, that two answers, right, uh, either we don't, we don't want to check because, um, because, once she, if she's already married, right, then we don't want to check um, to see if, um, no, the most question was, let her get married and we'll check in a month from now, right, we'll see if she's pregnant, right, and we'll know, right, so uh, the Gemara says we don't want to check once she's already married because then it shall be miskana or baila, will be distasteful for her husband to find out now that she's pregnant from somebody else, right. But that was uh, kind of the checking that was more of an invasive check, yeah, right. No, I think the that idea the is that was that was, was, was the attacking. That was the bedikah. Right, right, right. So without cool, okay. whatever. Right, right. So then the Gemara says, ask on uh, check just the way she walks. So the Gemara says that she can hide that, right? And she would hide it. Why? Why would she hide it? She'd hide it because she wants the child to be uh, misyachis after her new husband, so that he'll be able to get Yerusha. 
from there. Okay. Uh, so the Gemara now really goes to a new halacha, which is that somebody is not permitted to marry um, a, a woman who's already pregnant, or Menekes Chavera. Okay, and that's an absolute isser. Um, and if he does so, right, then he has to he has to divorce her, and he's never allowed to to remarry her. Those Chazal were very strict about this, right? Um, and the Gemara says that that we're concerned, right? That uh, this is uh, from the Gemara that uh, we learned earlier that if a woman is 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 pregnant and then she has relations, that could cause her to to uh, abort the fetus, basically, and. Um, and uh, therefore, he might uh, he might do damage. He might end up killing this fetus. And uh, so that's what the Gemara says to begin with. The Gemara goes back on that. The Gemara says that uh, the same way we permit uh, a husband and wife to have relations even when they're even when she's pregnant, that should apply here, right? So the Gemara says that we're concerned that uh, either if she's nursing, right, then we're concerned that that if she becomes pregnant, then her milk will dry up or her milk will go sour. And she won't be able to nurse the child, right? Or um, if she is is pregnant, but then after she has the child, then she's going to start nursing this child, right? And then um, if she becomes pregnant again, so the same idea, right, is that we're concerned her milk might sour and she won't be able to nurse the child. So the Gemara says that should apply to uh, the, to uh, any any woman, right, to a married couple as well. The Gemara says if it's a married couple, then we we say that they'll they'll um, so basically the Gemara's version of formula. They'll find formula for the baby and they'll feed the baby, right? But if it's not this, this man's child, then we're concerned that he won't give her the money that she needs to uh, to get the formula for this child. Right? And therefore, Chazal said that because of that, it's going to be Asr uh, and he's not allowed to marry at all. I agree. What? Yeah, this was before Wick, but uh, you know that, uh, that like uh, soy formula, it's a fortune, right? That uh, allergen free so formula and stuff, but maybe hey, that's I, what we were concerned it's about. It's hard to believe that, that, that he wouldn't support, like, wouldn't support his wife's child. I understand right. the Gemara is saying that. Right, right. right. The Gemara is saying that that's what we're to... concerned, right? That's the concern. That's the concern that we have, right?